Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be setting up CMU, the Wii U emulator, on Android. Now CMU is still in an experimental phase so just be aware that if you're going to install it today you will run into crashes, graphical issues, texture issues, and all that fun stuff. But you can also have a ton of fun with it too and there's a lot of games that work really well if you have the right device and the right hardware, of course. Especially if you have a stylus on hand and a device with a touchscreen, just have some fun with Kirby and other touchscreen games. Now I'm gonna be using the Odin 2 portal in today's video, since that's my device of choice and it has the best support with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and an Adreno GPU, but your results might vary depending on the device that you're going to use. Okay, so let's go ahead with the install. You want to head to the description of the video or to S Simcoe's CMU GitHub project. Go to releases on the right and you want the latest release, which as of this video is 0.1, but if you're here in the future, just grab whatever the latest one is. Go ahead and download the APK just right under assets and then install it and open it on your device. Now at this point, you're obviously going to need some games so you can play those games. It just makes sense. I have a link in the description to a video on ROMs, and as of today, they need to be in the WUA format. So personally, I have all of my Wii U games already as WUA, and I also have them as one file, with the updates, the DLC, and the base game all combined into one file. So if you have them all separately, I'll leave a video in the description on how you can combine those, but you will need a PC with CMU installed to do so. Alternatively, like I said before in that first video, you can find these games already combined on the internet. You just have to follow that video and it'll show you what to do and where that website is. So once you have your game library somewhere on your device, I have mine on my SD card and it's in a folder called ROMs and then there's another folder called Wii U. So it's nice and organized. But now you can open CMU, click the three dots top right, go to settings, general settings, and then select add game path. And then click the plus icon in the top right. Now what you wanna do here is navigate to the folder that has all of your Wii U games inside of it and then select it. So for me, I'm going to my SD card, the ROMs folder, and then the Wii U folder. If you head back to your CMU main screen, you should see all of your games populated. And if not, you can pull down to refresh it, but they should all show up here if they are in the right format and they downloaded properly. Let's head back to settings and then input settings and then controller one. We need to map the controls for Wii U to the device that you're using. So click the disabled part and select the controller that you want to use. Special note here, some games require the gamepad, some can use the pro controller and classic controller, and some can't. So you'll be here often swapping controllers depending on the game that you want to play, but the mapping tutorial that we're about to do for each is all the same. So just to quickly repeat that, if you find the game isn't accepting your inputs, Check online to make sure that that game actually works with the controller profile you selected, as most likely it doesn't. You chose a game that doesn't work with a pro controller, for example, or a classic controller, and it requires the gamepad. For now, I'm just going to pick the gamepad. You should now see all of the Wii U buttons, so go ahead and map the controls on your device to the buttons by tapping the button, and then the button on your controller, and then off you go. ZL and ZR are L2 and R2 on normal controllers, for those that get confused like I do every time. Plus and minus is start and select. At the bottom of gamepad is extra things that you can map, and thankfully my Odin 2 portal has two back buttons that I could use for this, but you likely won't have additional buttons on your device that you can use, depending on what you're using. Now if you do, show screen is a good one and turning on the toggle as it lets you quickly swap between the gamepad and TV screens at the push of a button. Back out when you're all done and head to overlay settings. Go ahead and set the position to top right for now, but feel free to change this later if you want. You can now adjust the information here of what you wanna show. So it usually shows the frame rate or you can add draw calls or CPU usage and more. You might not want any of this at all, 
but I would probably keep frame rate on for at least the beginning just so you can keep an eye on it. Once that's done, back out and head back to the main screen. Three dots again, top right, and this time let's do graphic packs. Now at the top right, you're going to see a download icon. Go ahead and select that. This is going to download all the graphic and compatibility packs for all of the games that you have installed. So in a lot of scenarios, you won't need this and you can just launch and play games, but some games might require a tweak here and there, or maybe you just want to adjust some things for a specific game, change the resolution, change the frame rate, all of that fun stuff. And you can do that here. Head back to the main CMU screen and go ahead and launch a game by selecting it. If you check the right or top right, depending on what you have enabled, you're going to see all sorts of stats and sometimes it might be just frame rate if that's all you selected, or if you selected everything like I did, you'll see the entire right is just covered. Now, again, some of you might just want the frame rate showing as it's kind of hard to play with the entire right screen being taken up, but it's your choice. I just want to show you what it looked like. Now at the top left, you're going to see a settings cog. And you also see some notifications from time to time of shaders being compiled and all that sort of thing. The first few times that you run a game or new area of a game, you're going to see some slowdowns as the shaders compile. But after that, assuming that you have a powerful enough device for Wii U, you should have some smooth sailing. Shaders being compiled is something that you're just going to have to deal with constantly. Now, if you select the settings cog at the top left, you have a few options. If you're using the Wii U gamepad controller, you can replace the TV with pad, meaning it swaps what's being shown on screen between what the Wii U gamepad shows and what the TV shows. Alternatively, show pad will show both screens side by side. Show input overlay will show the on-screen touch controls, which thankfully are disabled by default, but if you are here using on-screen touch controls, then I guess this is for you. To exit a game, as of right now, swipe up and use the back arrow and then exit. Or you can use the settings cog top left to exit as well. Otherwise, at this point, you are all set up and ready to play. One thing to point out, I mentioned it before, but you're going to have to change controllers depending on the game. And when you do, with this current build, it does wipe all of your controls each time you swap back and forth. It is slightly annoying, I know, but get used to mapping controls quite often. For those that want to import saves or other files from maybe the PC version of CMU, you definitely can, depending on the device that you're using and if it can access Android's data section. So to find the folder, you're gonna need a File Explorer app like Solid Explorer, head to your internal storage, Android, data, info.cmu.cmu, grant access if it pops up, and then the files folder. You're going to notice, for those of you familiar with CMU on PC, that the folder locations and all the folder names are all the same. That means to import saves, you would head into the MLC01 folder, user, save, and then delete the files in here and replace them with your own from your PC that are in the same spot. Those are where your saves are. That also means for those of you using SyncThing like I do, this is the folder to sync with all of the items inside. That is personally what I do across my devices. And that is all I have to teach you right now. Jump into some games and have some fun. There isn't much that you can adjust settings wise to get things to play better with the current version of the emulator, but it should improve really quickly in the future. I'll revisit this with an updated video when we get to some major milestone points or when this guide no longer makes sense. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.